It's a project in Power Ed and we're very excited to be a part of it. It's something that's creating a new community and creating new connections between multi-stakeholders um, or multiple stakeholders within the entire European um, landscape of education. So it's looking to promote existing opportunities to really amplify things that are happening in areas within Europe that maybe we weren't aware of previously and it's about connecting, supporting them and helping to find areas of collaboration and education. When we started to do the mapping we were looking at gathering sort of some very essential facts around the entire ecosystem and what we started to see were gaps. So we saw gaps in terms of where there wasn't much activity in edtech. We saw countries with hundreds and sometimes thousands of different um, edtech organizations and communities and supportive instruments and we saw entire areas where it was almost black, where there was nothing there. We also saw that there were big gaps between the genders, so great gender disparity in terms of funding, in terms of who is founding, and in terms of who is managing some of our ed tech organizations. We also saw big gaps in terms of um, where companies are able to go or expand to, so the internationalization capacity of some of these countries, which in turn makes Europe more innovative and um, much more of a global player and then increases the attractiveness of the market itself. And so I think some of these things are, are gaps, but they're also indicative of what some of the bigger issues are for each of the uh, startup organizations or ed tech companies. And that looks to things like the transparency, the way that the public and the private institutions are able to work together, the different kinds of mechanisms that are in place to support ed tech, and that's looking at things like funding mechanisms, that's looking at support in, in other manners, even if it's um, founding support information, the better ways of moving into different international markets, sort of creating handshakes for that. And there's, um, we saw a lot of different areas where we can proactively then start to engage with different activities and I think the key thing that came out of the mapping that we started doing last year was understanding that the majority of all edtech organizations in Europe are really small companies so they're classified as micro organizations or micro enterprises and that means that they have one to ten uh, employees and mainly that's about one to three and so that has rude implications if you start looking at what's possible in terms of support and what our European market needs, which is going to look very different to some of the international markets.